Okay, welcome everybody to, here we go, Coffee and Art <laughs> in Monday morning. Hope everybody had a good weekend. So a few things to show and share. And I told the girls pre-chat that I had some ideas that popped into my head at midnight. So, um, yeah, for, for about 12 to 1, I was up writing notes and uh, getting ideas. Then this morning I woke up and cut down some magazines for a project that I have to want to do today. We'll see how this goes. That's as far as I got as far as is this going to work. <laughs> it, it, it's working in my head. <laughs> oh, thanks, Scoobs. Uh, the idea worked in my head. Um, I don't know if y'all never, if you have trouble falling asleep. Now, when the, uh, a new idea is rolling like this, I have to write it down. Because then, I'll, of course, you know, you'll forget it. And I'm always big about writing ideas down. And this is going to be part of idea collecting this project today, along with the magazine journal. Um, so you have to write your ideas down. Big, big on writing your ideas down because you will never remember every idea that pops into your head. And trust me, you get a lot more ideas than you think. But you forget them so quickly because they're replaced with the next idea. Whereas if you wrote them down or collected your ideas, then you would have them. <coughs> but if you ever have trouble falling asleep, um, do something like, um, I'll paint in my head. Or um, and you could do a color book page. Usually a painting will overrule a color book page in my head. But if you... If you lay down and you're and you got all kinds of things on your mind and you can't sleep, then mentally go take out a canvas, gather your supplies, set them out on your art table, mix your paints, get out your brushes, see yourself sketching out the idea, and take your time and just mentally go through the steps. It's kind of like counting sheep, but you're counting art steps in your project. And then you can see yourself, you know, if you're coloring, for instance, then see your page in front of you and, and get your colors out, start coloring, what color combinations, and that kind of thing. And it relaxes you because it takes your mind off of a thousand things and just kind of focuses it down to one, you know, one little project. And so it relaxes you. Like I said, it's kind of like counting sheep. Uh, but now, when you start getting hundreds of ideas rolling in your head at once, oh, I got to do this tomorrow. Oh, I want to do that. I want to do this on stream. I want to do, you know, then you're then you're getting too many ideas. <clears throat> yeah, and I and I watch Jean too <laughs> if I can't sleep. But I don't want to do that in the middle of the night. If I wake up in the middle of the night or something, because I don't want to wake Hubster up. He gets up at you know 4:30 as it is. <clears throat> Sorry guys, let me get a sip of coffee. So, um, you know, I can just close my eyes and, and picture a, uh, yeah, instead of counting sheep, you, you, you color a page in your head. And you can imagine whatever colors, tell yourself stories that aren't good enough to, oh, you know, but the thing is, Aaron, they may be good enough to write down, you got to write them down. <clears throat> I was saying before um, I hit record that I can I can take a post-it note in my Sharpie, which I don't know what I did with it. I'm going to need here and just write down, you know, an idea I might have and write the word down and I can remember. But when I have things like a whole bunch of stuff that I want to remember, then I don't want to <clears throat> wake Hubster up and my phone my phone light is pretty bright. I'll just have to, you know, run to the bathroom, write it all down. <laughs> I did that about three times last night. He may be here. I don't know. Sometimes he pops in in the morning. Um, yeah. So anyway, just saying if you do. Okay. Um, two, three things first before we get started on the project. I said started and Siri popped up. Uh, first off, I wanted to show you, now I talked last week about my granddaughter being at Summit for the cheer competition. Their team did not win, but I do have, um, just going to Summit is really a big deal, guys. If y'all, if you have kids or grandkids in, in competition cheer, you know what a big deal going to Summit is. However, I at least have a little video of their practice. Let's see. 
and uh, you can't see who anybody is so I'm gonna I'll go ahead and let's see let me back this up here if I can there we go all right so I'll try to zoom in so y'all can kind of see <clears throat> this is some of their practice down see there at the ESP where's the little sign there there's a sign somewhere that shows that uh, hang on they're at the ESPN Center practicing out in the yard. Okay, so I'm going to show you this real quick. Boo's in the middle. And then she goes over this way. So yeah, <laughs> real proud, real proud of her. Hey, Ronja. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you because I talked about it all last week. So, you know. Um, and then I got a couple pictures of, from the, not the actual competition. That'll probably be on YouTube. One of, one of, they have a, a photographer that films things not sure about summit I'm not sure but anyway um, I did get a couple pictures of her uh, here's one I'll just show you this one so yeah so yeah there she is cheer <coughs> at uh, summit so Anyway, another sip of coffee, guys. Starting to talk makes my voice start. Got to drink something. Oh. Hey, Mel. Okay, so <clears throat> I did finish. I did tell the girls I tried to. I wanted to do a, uh, I wanted to use up the paints that were in these little bottles because I wanted to use the paints up so I could use the jars for my magicals, right? So I have five, ten, sixteen magical colors that I got um, in the, you know, I, I got them off uh, Amazon from Lindy Stamp Gang. And what they are, they're a powder. <clears throat> and when you get them wet and dissolve them completely, they're like permanent, like an ink. Okay, they're permanent. So I wanted to put some in some spray bottles and then leave more concentrated powders to use, like in a palette or something. Or sprinkle. You can sprinkle them on a wet paper and they just do magical things. Um, <clears throat> so I needed these all cleaned out so that I could use them. So what I did on... Um, on over the weekend, I don't even remember what Dad did this. Now was it yesterday afternoon? Yeah, it was yesterday afternoon. Hubster was taking a nap. <laughs> um, no, I did not get under the boardwalk, Janet. That that set. No. Um. So anyway, I took out a big roll of paper. I have you know huge rolls of paper, and I rolled it out in the in the grass, <clears throat> and it was so windy too. So I was kind of worried about setting up my camera and my lappy and everything up on TV trays outside. But I took it all outside, set it up, you know, set up my camera on um, on uh, Trippy the Tripod here. So I had my camera here and set up Trippy the Tripod. I took my lappy, took it all outside, rolled out the paper, and I was going to just sprinkle out all that leftover paints out of these jars, clean them out, and reuse them for my magicals. So I set it all up. Um, I had an umbrella. I put an umbrella over Lappy so I could see the screen. And I hit record. Everything was going. So I run out there to the grass and start flinging paint. Got the, had the hose out there, squirting down the paint, and watering it down. And it was all windy. So I was having to run over to my little center garden for bricks. Ran over there for bricks, put the bricks out, was rolling it out, and anyway. So, it, then, and it only took about, I only did it for maybe less than 10 minutes, probably closer to six, seven minutes, something like that. 
because it didn't take long just to you know get the get the paper wet shake out all the excess paint uh, and all that so then I take I turn it all down save the video take it all in take the camera back in take the lappy in take the TV trays back in roll you know set the paper out to dry take everything back upstairs and then I look at the video and because I I went on battery on lappy instead of hard you know plugging into the wall which was right there I have an outdoor plug I could have just plugged it in right there I, I went off a of battery so it turned out jerky it was like you know you know how it is when the film is jerky like that so all that work I mean I took me at least an hour for a five minute <laughs> Um, I did it on the grass Prisma because I didn't want to do that on the driveway because I didn't know how permanent any of those paints were going to be on the driveway. So I did it on the grass. Um, so anyway, it turned out all jerky and my hair is blowing and the papers are blowing, but it was, it was all like in stop motion. You know what I'm saying? What, like, it looks like I, I did this and then that and then this and then the paper goes like that and then the paper goes like that. It was all like all in stop motion. No, I'm not putting that on YouTube, Terry. <laughs> anyway, so that being said, I cleaned out all these jars, including a couple um, that I just had washed, you know, leftover dilutions in. And so I put labels on them, put the names on them. So, like, um, here's all, I won't read all the colors. I've done that before, but this is how vibrant they are and concentrated. Here's the white one. Um, and so they're very vibrant and concentrated. There's the black. <clears throat> so these are all the colors. I made labels for them all. Some are kind of similar, like those two are really similar. And two of the, the lime greens, these two are real similar. They're a little bit different, but you know. These are a little different. One's mint. doesn't look quite mint on camera. And then a yellow. So I did, and then I put them, they're in these little Kleenex boxes. And I just, you know, kind of spaced out. I put the yellows and greens, the pinks and orange, the blues and purples, like that. And then I just wrote magical inks on the front so that when they're on my shelf, I know that these are different from, you know, my other sprays. Uh, no. Oh, oh. So anyway, so get this. So I did all that with the paper and it was so windy I, and it was long. I mean, I'm talking like 10, maybe 20 feet of paper. Like I did 10 feet and no, probably like, well, let me try to guess by my body. Probably about eight feet and eight feet. I rolled out eight feet and eight feet and then sprayed and sprayed water and did all this then i rolled another then i took another took the roll of paper and went on top of both of those eight feet to kind of mash it down and to make another imprint and then did another set on top and the wind was just blowing it was so windy i didn't even think about this guy i just went out to do it i wanted to get these jars cleaned out and to clean these jars out i didn't want to waste the paint that was in them so i did all that took over an hour <laughs> And then, um, so I put a brick on it. I put a brick on it while it was going to dry, right? No, it didn't fly away. I put a brick on it. I went out a couple hours later. They're all glued together. All the papers were glued together because I put a brick on it. But I, I had to do something. I couldn't just let it fly around the neighborhood, go collect it later. <laughs> so all that and the paper went in the trash. So... <laughs> Don't try to do driveway art in the wind. So, anyway, let's move that off of there. <laughs> All right, so, oh, i got to get my magazine journals here. So, y'all know, now we're, now we're on to the project. <laughs> so, this is the idea that came to me last night. It's kind of a combination of a couple other ideas. Well, and the other thing, too, one of my neighbors was having a party. I think it was a graduation party for one of his kids. And we were invited, but, you know, Hubster is just getting over being having a cold, and he was napping, and we weren't going to go anywhere. But his music was loud, which I don't care. But when you're filming, I said, oh, man, I'm going to have to turn my volume down because I can't put this on YouTube with music. 
blaring copyrighted music you can't do that right <laughs> and uh, so I'm thinking okay so I waited you know I, I while I was getting the hose out and rolling out the paper and putting bricks on it I'm thinking okay I'm gonna try to do this in between the sets <laughs> you know you had a bunch of music then it'd be quiet for a couple minutes so as soon as the, the that set of music record run out there you know and so <laughs> okay so now on to the idea and I partially have started it y'all know about magazine journals that we've done before okay and if you have any questions put them on put them in caps if you're watching this recording on YouTube bless your heart <laughs> if you're watching this on uh, YouTube it's a live show on Ustream dot TV and um, yeah and I upload these videos unedited unrehearsed <laughs> on everything and I just put them up on uh, YouTube and I've been doing that for about three years I've been streaming for seven and uh, almost seven and um, uploading for about about three <laughs> about three years and that was because a few of my friends Gene Rach zero one one three or O one one three Gene and a few others <coughs> said you need to put these up on YouTube I went no I don't want to edit and I don't want to do all that too much time so what I ended up doing is just uploading straight to YouTube just as they are they're unedited they're not speeded up they're just nothing they're just like they're they this is what we do on Monday Wednesdays and the occasional Friday so <laughs> and I'm glad I did I have to say I'm glad I did I met lots of cool people and fun things over on YouTube so yeah all right so back to the magazine jars I've shown these before they are two magazines glued together and I, I won't go into the spine here and all this well I might have to if we do the next anyway um, if you work in a magazine journal, especially if you've glued a couple together or any kind of magazine or any kind of journal where the spine might warp like this, you have to work front to back, back to front, some in the middle, some in the front, some in the back, back and forth. If you don't, if you just try to go straight from the front to the back, this is what can happen to the spine. And there's no getting that back. There's no flattening that spine back out. So in this one, I did go front to back, middle, back and forth, back and forth. And it's still a little warpy, but not near as bad as the other one. These are two magazines glued together. And then I, I call it reverse collage, where you'll take your pages and white out, white out could be any color, okay? You paint out any text or any pictures or anything you don't want, okay? You can ink the edges. You can distress it. These are all distressed inked edges. Um, let's see. So you can see here. Now a couple benefits of doing this. One is you can, you'll learn how to blend. You will learn how to, you'll, you can use, use the colors that are there. So for instance, this page had a lot of red, yellow, and cream. So those are the craft paints, and I use all the same craft, I use the same paints in all my projects, whether it's my art card, my art journal, my collage, um, art journals, my um, uh, altered books. Oh, I just use Americana craft paint. It's matte. The reason, and it doesn't say matte on it. I did have somebody ask that on YouTube uh, over the weekend. Um, it doesn't say matte on it. But it does not say metallic, satin, or gloss. Those will say on there, you know, it'll say metallic, satin, or gloss. You don't want those if you want to use color pencil on top of it. This is matte. So because it's matte, let me just grab a pencil here. Pencil is so awesome over the top of it. It's the same paint I use in my color books either straight out of the bottle for backgrounds or washes of it over you know over over item you know over the animals or over whatever uh how which what <laughs> which what what Valerie um yeah it it makes it it gives it a tooth exactly it gives it tooth now you can well I won't get into the color book right now so let's just stick with this so that's what I use and um, 
sometimes I'll water it down, sometimes I'll blend it, some, you know, blend a couple colors. And these right here, guys, are probably at least four and maybe five, four or five years old, these magazine journals. I haven't made a brand new, well, I did make a brand new one, but I think we did one page. <laughs> Can you appease on your favorite colors of those? Um, well, my favorite colors are yellow ochre, sienna, and indigo blue. But that doesn't help you if you don't like those colors. So you have to buy colors. I would recommend buying your basic colors, you know, a, a yellow, a red, a couple of reds, a couple of blues, a couple of greens, and then pick out, you know, and a black and white. And then pick up other colors that you like, a mint green or different shades of gray or brown. Uh, you got to pick colors, you know, and they're only about a dollar a, thing, a jar. And sometimes they're even cheaper than that. Now, I know international over there, it's, diff it's, a, it's more expensive and you may not even be able to get it Americana. So you just, whatever kind of craft paint is available, just don't get satin or gloss. Because then if you want to write on it or do anything on it with pencil, you're going to be fighting the gloss. And it just won't work, especially in your color books. So just, you know, whatever kind of craft paint's available. I just like Americana because I like their colors. They have good coverage. I just, and no, they're not paying me, you know. I just like my deco art Americana. And I, that's just always been my favorite uh, craft paint. Okay. So, uh, again, you can see... The, I glued this on there. So it's, I call it kind of a reverse collage because I'm painting and, and bringing out the background, kind of like you do in an, my altered book, okay? Kind of like that. I paint out what I don't want. But then you can add things on top. So this is, you know, there's just all different kinds. You can do it real grungy. Some pages I've even taped back in because they came loose. Um... And, you know, you, you these are probably both, um, there's some stencil, um, these are probably both, uh, are, are, both these magazine journals are made out of Somerset Studio art journaling or blogging or some kind of magazine. I don't even remember which ones they were. They have 25 or 30 different kind of magazines. But if you, like I always say, if you like gardening, if you like fashion, Whatever you like, have a magazine that is going to be something that you like. Now, the trick to using any kind of craft paint in your in a magazine like this, and by the time you get done, the pages are, you know, they're a lot sturdier than, you know, because you got them both got them covered front and back with paint. You might have some collage on them. You might have some other stuff on them. They're a lot sturdier than you think. Um... The, the trick to using a paint in any kind of journaling is to let it dry. That is the key. I've never had any problem with my Americana craft paint page um, journal sticking. Um, a lot of times if you use the artist grade, the nice heavy bodied acrylics that are, you know, nice coverage and all, they have binders in them and they might even have a little bit of a sheen. I never use those, anything like that in color books. And the thing about those is that that binder, that sheen is what makes your pages stick. So if you stick with craft paint, matte craft paint, and let it dry completely, your pages won't stick. Now, I might have a couple pages that sound a little sticky, and for the most part, the reason that's going to be is because these books have, they're weighted with other books. I have so many that, you know, they may be a little uh, kind of crunched together. But, you know, so you can see, there's, they're, they're just flipping right, you know, right through. And again, these were made probably at least four to five years ago. Okay, so, <laughs> well, Arctic Elizabeth, funny you should say cutting it in half because this is what we I did. All right, so I'm going to move these off the table here. So here's part of what I want to do. I took two mag, and I already cut them because it took a little bit of time, but I'll tell you how I did it. So I, first off, you have to put a, a, a cutting mat down. You gotta put something down, a piece of wood, a cutting mat, something. Don't try to cut on your table. Like right now, I think I have 15 layers of paper on here. We counted, I cut it open one day and counted all the layers of, of paper on my table. So what I do to cut, first you have to have something to, you know, uh, to cut on. 
I use a metal ruler and an X-Acto knife. Do not try to do this with a plastic ruler like this. Do not try to do this with a plastic ruler. You will cut the ruler and it'll cut right through and cut your thumb. Ask me how I know. All right, so use a metal ruler. This one's got cork on the back, so it kind of stabilizes it from moving too much. Hey, Whippy. And what I did is I, I measure, I cut this, you know, measured it to cut in half. And then I, I on my craft uh, cutting mat, then I just went like this, put the ruler down, and take your time. Take your time. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. And just cut, cut cut and it's going to probably take a hundred cuts right and just and make sure your blade is sharp and you know try to hold this down as stiff as you can and try to keep your thumb out of the way because I have cut my thumb okay um yeah <laughs> yeah don't do this without a new blade exactly use a new blade because if not it's going to start wobbling and and it's and make sure it's nice and tight in there too you know make sure your blade is tight in there and then when you get about halfway done, I just kind of flip this up like this, flipped up both sides and just continued to cut. Now at the very, very end, I had to flip it over and cut a little on the spine. So you just got to take your time. You can see it came out a little off right there, which for this purpose, I don't care if it's a little off and there's a few pages that are a little warpy like it's not a hundred percent perfect but this is going to be idea here's what i called it where is it <clears throat> this is going to be wait for it <laughs> mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground <laughs> i came up with that at 1 a.m okay so <laughs> So I did this with an old Artful Blogging. These are all, you know, Somerset Studios. And I also did it with an art journaling magazine. Hey, Miss Vicki B. The girl with the fancy hair. If y'all have not seen Miss Vicki B's new haircut, OMG. She's so cute. Just so stinking cute. So, hey, Miss Vicki B. Um... So, so we cut these in half. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to make this thick and a lot of ideas. Again, <clears throat> mini magazine, mind mapping, idea collecting, prompt playground. Doesn't that sound catchy? Say that three times fast. Yeah, Prisma. Okay, so. And, and I don't want them to be, I want them to be all kind of mixed up. So I'm going to take this one, then this one then this one, then this one. Now, again, they are not perfect. <laughs> they are not perfect. Look, I've kind of swerved off on that one. But it, it, for what I plan for this, I don't care that it's not perfect, okay? So I'm going to pick, actually pick, which ones I think are that. That's a little bigger, so the back one. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, <laughs> it is so cute, her new haircut. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, and, and this is what I did with the other, you know, the big magazine journal, these, is I glued the, the two covers together, and then I covered the whole thing with scrapbook paper. Now, these are pretty beat up. Again, these are four or five years old. I don't even remember how long ago we made them. Okay, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to glue them together. So I'm just going to flip this over. And here's the kind of glue I use. You use whatever kind of glue you know is strong. Hey, TNT, CMC. <laughs> I like my Eileen's Tacky. Uh, let me just get a little tray here. I like my Eileen's Tacky because it's tacky. It works well. It glues well. I've never had anything come apart once I've set it well, you know, glued it well. And uh, do not, don't try to do a glue stick with this. Uh, you want, uh, you know, you want a good glue. The second advice I give you when I say about gluing, now I'm just going to, I'm going to squeeze some out here because I'm going to use quite a bit, okay? So let me just kind of squeeze that out. I like Eileen's Tacky also because you can roll it right off your hands. Okay, yeah, it's tacky, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anytime you glue anything down, whether it's with tacky glue or any kind of white glue or, you know, kind of, it's, 
you know, kind of a liquid glue like this, is don't just squeeze it out and have like, you know, beads of glue all over and try to glue something together. For one, it now it's not so crucial here because this is heavy cardstock, but if you try to glue any paper to paper and you just squeeze out some glue and it's bumpy, you should put those things together and you got all you can see are those lines of glue. You need to take, and the other reason that this is good is because you get all the way to the edge. So I'm going to put it on pretty thick. Now you can squeeze it out and then do this. I'm just, I got it, it's just easier for me to grab it here with my finger. But you could squeeze it out on here, but then smooth it out end to end. And probably best if you put, you know, something in between so you're not gluing anything together, these pages together. But I'm just trying to be careful and kind of going to the edge here. Now, the second thing is when you try to glue, like making your own um, art journals or gluing scrapbook paper or anything like that, <clears throat> you don't want to just do it here and then put this down. You want to put the glue on this one, too. Okay, you have to, it, it, there's something about putting that bond of glue to glue that just makes it stronger. If you don't do this, then don't email me if your books don't stick. <laughs> Again, if y'all have any questions, put them in caps, guys. So yeah, if y'all don't know, I, who, I'm sure everybody here knows Miss Vicki B. She's my journal, I mean, um, planner queen. If I did planners, I would be bowing at her feet. <laughs> But I don't do planners. But if you want to know anything about planners, the newest, the you know, what's going on planners and all that, you need to follow Miss Vicki B. Okay, so now I'm going to glue, now that they've got completely covered with glue, now I'm going to, you know, put them together. Now, officially, and I might have to, I have to think about it while I do it. Okay, I don't want any glue coming out. If any pages stick together, I will just kind of rip them apart. <laughs> But take a little time with this, guys. Take a little time. And you really should, you know, like mash it down and let it set up. Let it set up really well. Let me get a baby wipe to get any excess off. You know, we're, we're trying to do a lot on a stream here. I'm going to just make sure I don't have any glue on the edges. Which, if I again, if I do, I'll either cut them apart or whatever. All right, so now the next layer, and I'm going to put four of these together. So this is going to be nice and thick. It's going to be like, you know, two to three inches, two and a half, three inches thick with um, two magazines cut in half. And then I'll, I don't know that I'll, I guess I should go ahead and cover them just so I can show you how. But I really want to get to the guts of it, get to the inside. Because that's what the idea came to me last night when I was, I would have used deli. Yeah, put something in between. I have parchment paper, wax paper, anything. Just put it in between, you know. I'm just, I'm kind of in a hurry. <laughs> like we always are here. All right, so. But again, you never have to go as fast as we do here on the show. Have to get some more glue out. See it takes a lot of I'm using a lot of glue as you saw. And squeeze out more. But don't squeeze out so much that it dries before you get to it. Oh oh so cute. You stay busy, that's one thing you do stay, Miss Vicky B. Miss Biggie B says she wants to be an art. Her daughter wants to be an artist like me. Getting the paintbrushes out right now. <laughs> okay, so now those two are, you know, now I'm going to glue those two together. Again, you know, it really needs to have some weight on it. And, you know, kind of center them up and clean off any, you know. I'm trying to keep the smooth at the bottom. So it's a little rough at the top where it's not perfectly cut. Um, I didn't cut it a perfect, I just did this this morning, cut these down, but, um, I'm just going to hold it here for just a minute. You're a slob when I got it. Oh, and I just stick that in the way. Let's get another baby wipe. 
so again this you, you know take your time cut it take you know don't just try to cut it in 30 minutes take your time and take an hour to cut them down if you want you know all right so now the last layer here again I'm gonna just all the way to the edge to even get out a little bit more glue, I think. So yeah, if you missed it, this is our mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground. All right, and I'll, let me also say this. If you have no desire to cut up magazines and, and use magazines for this project, then use, you know, some little art journals. You could use composition books. You can use anything. Um, but the, the fun part of this is that we're going to work around and, and with, hey, Susan Ribbons, we're going to work around and with the images that are on the pages. Okay. So now I'm going to glue these together. Let's just try to get any excess. Again, if a couple pages stick together, I'll either take a knife, two more scissors, and cut them apart. Because I'm sure i got some glue here or there. Okay. So. What's my... Oh, M-M-M-M-I-C-P-P. -P. <laughs> That's the acronym. Hashtag M M M M I C P P. <laughs> ah, Terry. <laughs> it doesn't have to be that, you know, that's just what I, I wanted all those elements to be a part of it. Because what I, here's, while I'm kind of, you know, give me a minute to kind of, let's at least get it a little stuck down. <laughs> you girls. Um. It <laughs> uh, is all of our ideas. I even thought about getting out my uh, prompt jar as part of it. So you know how we have. Hey, CB. You know how we have. Hang on, guys. I'm. You know. I don't want to. I don't. I gotta kind of keep an eye on the seepage here. <laughs> this may end up being a block of paper if I'm not careful, right? I, I'm trying to be careful not to. You know, glue individual pages together. I know some will be st stuck, but all, all I ever do when I glue something together is I'll stick my hand in there and just go snap and kind of tear them apart, you know, if, if you've ever done that when you've glued something together. Um, <clears throat> I'm just kind of giving a little pressure and talk for just a minute. <laughs> you typed that. Yeah, I know. That's what the lag is, right, Terry? That's the lag. <clears throat> so we have done many idea collecting and listing okay and mind mapping color combinations we've done all kinds of those projects over the years um here is my current notebook uh-oh here is my current it's a three ring binder and this is how thick it is this is my current idea collecting notebook i have it tabbed out with a table of contents so these are all my ideas not all of them because even with this we still have remember we put another list in this book of all um in this you know my drawing um uh, this is my new one newer one where's my list is it in the back it back here here so we made the list of 180 things to draw and combine so I have so many of these lists in this book this is just the ones that we were going to use to draw like here we had we we combined ballet slippers and a duck where's your daughter where is your daughter right there um miss vicky b look show <laughs> Here's a duck with ballet slippers around her neck because they won't fit on her big feet. And then that's her tutu right there. 
So by combining a couple of different things, this is how we um, this is how we um, get ideas. So yeah, we have quite a few things here. Some kiwis, and this is just just that. This is just the newest. Oh, here's my crowns for the enablers: the Eileen crown, the Janet crown, and the Paula crown. These are the enabler queen crowns. <laughs> anyway, so it's just got all kinds of little sketches in here um, that we we practiced in and drew, and there's some bugs and. Anyway, um, some feet and hands. Anyway, so this list is one of the many like I have in here. But, and I won't go through this right this second because I want to step by step here. But in here I have tons of lists. Remember we've done lists of um, discoveries. We've done lists of uh, inventions. We've done lists of places people, things. We've done lists of occupations, you know, different jobs. Um, and all of those things I want to, now of course we're not going to fit thousands, <laughs> thousands of things on a list in this book, but we're going to make a big stab at it, okay? A crow for Laura. Why a crow? I don't understand a crow, Kmore. <laughs> I need my own crown for enablers. Yeah. Um, so these are all my list and ideas, and I have them broke out by, and I know I've shown y'all this. See, I've got so many things in here. This is just pretty paper from, I got even extra dividers. Um, here are my uh, paper dolls. Like, here's my Frida paper doll. Oh, there's my aunt. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to go through all the... Uh, I'll just tell you some of the contents. So here's my... One, two, three. In this book, which this is probably my... One, two, three... This may be my fifth or sixth idea book. Um, oh, supposed to say a crown for lower. Oh, a crown. Okay, I was going to say... I think Laura likes horses. <laughs> it's just a typo. Hey, Miko. Okay, so, and I just did my nails, and so I don't think they were quite dry. All right, so in this one, my 10 things that I have here, and then under each one, it's got subcategories, right? But, like, the first one is mind maps and words. The number two is patterns and designs. Three is clip art ideas, and, and I don't really use that that much because the ideas and the clip art, but this was like also, I like clip arts and stamps, I like the images. And from the clip art and stamps, not so much like stamping them in here, although there's that as well, or taking clip art and just putting clip art in here, what I'm doing is I'm using the clip art to generate ideas. Uh, like taking one clip art item, another clip art item, and combining them, kind of like we do our words, but with the images, okay? Stamps and stencils, lettering is number five, six is color, seven is symbols, symbols and numbers, uh, eight is coloring pages, nine ideas, and ten is notes. So, and you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff in here. <laughs> So, but what I want to show you to kind of whittle this down into a, a little bit more um, manageable book. Again, you don't have to use magazines, but the purpose of the magazine is because we're going to work with and around these images, whatever's on that page. Okay, now remember, you can paint out, you can... Um, circle words you can you'll see when we get to that part I'm still kind of you know making some pressure on this the other thing that I have a bunch of is all kinds of prompts like our prompt jar from a few years ago now these have like ideas to of things to do 
and you can put some of these all of them in here as well so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go through the pages and white out and when I say white out I mean paint out with whatever color uh, I do have, I did buy another big jar of just, this is just some Anita's all-purpose acrylic from Hobby Lobby, and I got it because I had a 40% off coupon, it's only $4.99 anyway, so I got this for a couple of bucks, $3 maybe, and, and I buy this for the purpose of using it, because I don't use gesso, I just don't find a need for gesso, I don't like texture, I want it smooth, I don't like, um, I don't like the, the grit, I mean, you know, adding acrylic paint on things gives it tooth, but not grit. Um, I've just found that, um, and I'm sure that Golden probably has a wonderful smooth gesso with no grit. But I'm not going to use uh, that on my magazine journal <laughs> or my magazine books. So I'm just going to use this cheap craft paint, right? as whiting out now the problem with us doing this on the show is I have to make sure that the pages are dry before I close them so what I think I'm going to do is I am going to get a piece of notebook paper and write down a lot of things or I can just go off of my list okay uh, go and we've done this before we've done our list We're, and I'm going to show you some of the mind mapping things that I'm thinking of showing putting in here um, but I can't paint and just turn the page and paint, 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 because you got to let it dry or heat gun it. So that's going to be kind of a slow process. The other thing is, is you don't have to do that. You could write right over this or use the blank places, use blank spaces, because it's not, there's no order to this. It's random ideas and random mind mapping so that when you could just open this at any place and you might have the word dog, you might have the word um, uh, gardener, and you might have IV, you might have use glitter, all on the same page. And so what the, uh, what the then from from that is you can take and I was I was thinking that maybe putting it on one side or the other but I don't think that's really going to matter. And then maybe making a uh, whiting out some uh, places um, where you can okay I'm going to tear this out I don't want the I don't want the renewal card in here uh, <clears throat> to mind map. So if you have all kinds of ideas written down here, like different lists, like I said, a dog, a gardener, some ivy, uh, and a uh, schoolhouse, and it could be, this is also good not just for visual artists, but if you're a writer and write stories. So if you have all kinds of just unrelated type of, of ideas and words, if you have all kinds of unrelated words or or our prompts on one page then if you can have an area where you can white out where you can mind map okay and then yeah mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground <laughs> then you can have an area where you can, I mean you can even just write right here on the pen you, the idea is to have it's a playground for your ideas so whether you white something out just write on the page uh, however you want to do it have a place though somewhere on that page where you can kind of mind map out those particular ideas you might say um, we said gardener okay so if you had the word gardener in your circle let me get some uh, notebook paper to play on um, I had some notebook paper handy I And we've done this with colors. We've done this. We've done this so many times with different things. And I write big on here for you to see. But if I'm going to write in here, it'd probably be a lot smaller. Okay. Um, like for instance, like a reflection. I might white out of ourselves and white out that text. Okay. But like for instance, let's say we had on this page we had like I said a gardener a dog, um, um, IV, I forgot all of what we said, and a schoolhouse, okay? Let's just say that those happen to come up 
by our random placing. I hope I'm making sense. If y'all have questions, please ask, okay? Hey, Lisa. Um, so let's just say these were our random words on here. And, and we might have the word reflection on there. This one over here has life, mad, you know, those kind, it has different things already on there. So you could also incorporate the words that are already on the page as well. So whatever, however where you decide to do your combinations, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do mine, but you can do yours in any form that you want. You can put whatever you want. So then when you start mind mapping these out, like when you think of a gardener, you might think of um, uh, like the, the English gardens, you might think of the English gar uh, gardens, and you have a conundrum old man um, as a gardener. Or you might think of, uh, what was her name, Tasha, Tas Tasha, uh, the artist that was a gardener. You might think of her. So you might think of a, uh, and so anyway, as you go, you will, you'll think up more ideas to go with each thing. Like a schoolhouse. What, you know, you might envision the, the little red schoolhouse. See, already I'm, I'm getting the whole vibe of an English countryside, but that's just where my mind goes, you know you know, <laughs> um, Ivy growing up, a wall. So you start doing things like this on the other page or somewhere. It doesn't have to be on the other page. It can be however you, you configure your layout, your, you know, the way you want to lay it out. But then you have all these different ideas and you can always add to it. So like a month from now, you might flip through and say, oh, Ivy. And, you know, you might think of a, not the wall, but you might think of a whatever, right? I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm trying not to. <laughs> I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. And uh, so anyway, you can mind map these things out. You can add colors. You can add places. But uh, in the beginning of the book, at somewhere at the beginning of your book, you need to have a big who, what, where, why, and how. You need to have that. Did I get them all? Who, what, where, what? When, when, when. Forget when. For, forgot when. So you need to have all your questions at the beginning. And any time, if you took this little list here and asked these questions for each word, you're going to have literally, guys, thousands of ideas. You will never run out of ideas if you list, combine list, pick from multiple lists, and ask these questions for each word. Because as you're asking, when's, what, when's this gardener? When is the time period? When is the time period? Is it 1800? Who's the gardener? Is he an English gardener? Is he uh, from another country and he's a, is in England? You know, what kind of garden? Where is it? What city? What county? You know, um, why is he there? How did he get there? So if you ask these questions for each of your words, so Prisma calls got herself a hot, sweaty farmer with abs of steel and a firm butt. You see where your mind goes? Just saying. All right. So anyway, but th make sure that these questions, maybe you might put in the very beginning your, you know, wipe this out. Maybe you'll have your name, your phone number, address, whatever. And you might name your book something else. Mine's going to be called Mini Magazine Mind Mapping Idea Collecting Prompt Playground. Then the second page... Under the table of contents, you might want to put who, what, when, where, why, and how. Because this is what makes your mind start rolling with your, um, with your list. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Now we'll I'll show you how to, you know, we can you can do more. And I've done lots of shows, guys, on idea generating, idea collecting, list making, and and if you do those things, mind maps, list, um, those kind of things, and then add these questions to it, trust me, you will never say, I don't have an idea ever again. Okay? 
but you've got to have them someplace where you can get at them. That's why I have those big three ring binders. But I thought that this would be a fun little playground for us to do the ideas in. Alrighty. So the first thing I think I want to do is cover this. So um, you can cover this with anything you want. I like to use a little bit of heavier cardstock. And the reason I like to cover it is mostly for the binding, for the spine. Okay. Um, you don't have to cover it if you don't want, but your spine's going to have a tendency to come apart. Whereas if you, let me just, I haven't even picked a paper. I'm just going to look through it, and, and it's best to have a card stock. Something a little heavier than, um, than just plain scrapbook paper, because that can be, um, tear easy. Not that you won't wear down, not that you won't wear down your um, cardstock as well, but it's a little bit firmer and better. So hang on guys, let's see what I've got here. I think I'll go with this one. I've got some Tim Holtz ones here. I think I'll go with these two maybe. Hang on, guys. I'm on the floor. Wait for it. Okay. Let's see. I think I'll go with these two. Two might should be enough. And I don't even mind piecing things together as long as they're not pieced on the um, spine. Hey, Kate, the skate. Okay, so I like these two Tim Holtz papers. Okay, it got a little bright with the sun coming through the window. I don't want to flash it out. We're good so far. Um... But you want to be able to at least cover the spine with one piece. So it, even if I just did the spine like here with this piece here and just had this much left, then I could glue some more papers on top or whatever. But you want a nice full piece covering the spine. You see what I mean? See what I mean, Vern? So I think I'm going to cut this off here. Let me get my big cutter. And this is mostly, like I said, for the sake of a good, sturdy spine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can find free magazines any, all over the place. I got stacks of magazines, so I don't need to look, hunt them up. All right. So, I'm thinking I'm going to go with these little... Let me cut that down even a little bit more. Uh, I forget what this line is called, but it's something from Tim. All right. So, now I'm going to... I think this was five and a quarter. I don't even remember. I just measured with the. Uh, I just measured with uh, lines, not measuring. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of line this up at the top, and I'm just going to crease it right here so I know where to cut, and I can always trim it more. So I'm going to fold that on the crease and cut that down. Let's see it better this way, I think. And I could even paint or ink the edges, which I might do that too. But right now, my main purpose of this is to get her over the spine. And it doesn't have to be even. It doesn't have to be more in the front or more. See, it's less in the back. I'm kind of going by the design here. And I didn't quite cover the whole thing. That's okay. As long as my main spine is covered. That's the point. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to kind of crease it. Kind of crease it. Alright. So let's see here. <coughs> Alright. I'm going to cut this down too. Because I'm going to use some of the same sheet. Alright. And it's kind of a kind of a junk journal type thing, so it doesn't have to be, you know. But you do what you want. Some people are more fasti more picky. <laughs> I say fastidious. Uh, some people are just more picky about their even their junk journals. Okay, so I'm going to do that on that side, 
and then on this side I need a little bit more what do I have here maybe a little bit of this flower here okay I think I'll just go with that so now let's move this out of the way so I did all this with just one piece of scrapbook paper okay so now we're going to go back to the glue again I'm going to glue these little flaps on here. That's got a, like a lump in it. Let me trim that down. I don't want to crease. I don't want to have to glue over a crease. And you might like just the way a ma the magazines look. If you just like the way this looks, then just leave it. But you need to do something on the spine. Okay. Maybe I should have just done that. Because this is kind of pretty. Now I want to cover it. But whatever you do, you have to do something on the spine. Even if it's just this much on the spine, you got to do the spine. It doesn't matter the front and the back so much, but you have to cover the spine or it's going to fall apart on you. All right, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to get my glue and I'm going to start gluing on the cover. And again, make sure that you don't just squeeze out beads of glue because it'll leave lumps. You gotta smooth it out. Okay, so I'm gonna get some more glue here. So I'm gonna first glue, and again, put it on both the front and, I mean, put it on the paper and the book. I don't know why, but it does matter. It just adheres so much better if you put it on both. There's your glue tip. All right, so now I'm going to glue this on. And you could glue the spine first and this on top, however you want your papers to work out. All right, so I'm just going to take a second here and get this nice and adhered. And you could take a card and get any bubbles out or any wrinkles I should say make sure it's nice and glued down now I want to get that glue off right there because I'm going to turn it over are you still with the y'all still with the tour <laughs> again I'm going to show you some of the prompts in the prom jar and um, hopefully we can make some headway here all right so I'm going to turn it over and then this is going to go right here make that a little small I think I'm going to cut it yeah, as long as the spine reaches, yeah, it'll still reach. Okay, I'm going to cut this down this way. I just cut it a little too short because I'm not really measuring on my balling and creasing. So again, you don't have to make a magazine journal for this. I've used three ring binders and just full on big magazine journals like I showed you. Um, but I just thought this would be fun because we've done, you know, we've done year long projects before. We've done idea collecting and uh, a year long project with file folders. And, and actual, some we've used the full-on file folder, and some we've actually folded up. I showed that, I think, last week, again. The file folder. This is off topic, but do you varnish the backs? No, I don't varnish the backs of my ATCs. I paint them all black. The backs of my um, art cards or ATCs. I paint them black and sign them. Um, so no, I don't varnish the back. I don't varnish the back because they're just painted with inf and then information written on top of black paper. I mean paint. Okay, so there we go. Again, where's a card? Just Hi, Beth. Nice to meet you. Okay. 
I haven't tried to focus the camera lately. I hope we're still good. <laughs> I'll zoom in more when we start doing painting and stuff. But I wanted to, I wanted everybody to see the big picture, right? So the whole thing here is about eight and a half, I think by five and a quarter, something like that, or maybe five and a, a little less than five and a half. And that's probably because I didn't cut it very perf perfectly. But it's like five and a half by eight and a half with these two, um, with the Somerset publications. And again, use whatever magazine you like. I just think that because there's so much arty stuff in it to work with, you know. All right, so now here comes the important part of the of the gluing. All right, so I'm going to do both. I'm going to put out a lot of glue here because you want to put a lot of glue on your spine. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this. I should have. I think I should have bent it first on the. I don't want to glue it shut, but I want to. I want to bend where the spine is. Okay, there. All right, so now I'm going to put plenty of glue on the flap. Thanks, guys. And again, you know, we kind of hurry around here. <laughs> In case you hadn't noticed, we try to get in as much information and ideas as we can in, at one time. But when you're doing this at home, don't try to rush. And again, by not, I'm not doing, I don't do speed paints or speed projects, speed it up videos. And I think in some senses that is beneficial to people because um, you can see how long things actually take, right? Things take longer than you think. You know, color book pages, whatnot. All right, so let's see. This one's going this way. All right, so now I can see how far I have to glue. So I'm going to just kind of set that on here. Because it's got glue on it. Now I want to make sure that my glue comes all the way out to here where the page ends. And then just kind of glue that on. Get me a baby wipe and kind of... Clean that up, mash it down. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over so I can get to the spine in the back here. All right, so now in the spine, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to blob. Look how much glue I'm putting. Can you see? I'm actually filling in cracks like spackling. I'm just like globs of glue. Globs of glue in that spine. I mean, fingerfuls. You really want to get in all those crevices, all the in between all those um, signet. I mean, all the books. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, that's, that's just coated with glue there. Okay, and now I'm going to come all the way over the top here, where the flap is going to. I'm not sure how far it's going to be. Yeah, okay, just barely over the top of that one. Lots of glue in there. Because when this dries, it's going to be really sturdy, guys. All right, so now I'm going to put pressure on the spine. And it's kind of e oozing out there. And slap it over. And put a lot of pressure on the spine. I mean, I'm pulling that paper. Whoops. I'm pulling that paper to get that spine just as tight as I can. And ideally... <laughs> you want to set this aside. You like the regular, <laughs> yeah. Um, set this aside to dry with books on top of it overnight. Okay. And so I'm really working on that spine there. As you can see, there's some coming out there. Let's just, you know, make sure. Get a fresh baby wipe. <laughs> So, I think I might just hit it with the heat gun. It won't, that's not good enough, but I'm going to do that just so my paper doesn't start tearing or wrinkling because I don't want it to, um, 
I want to, I don't want to tear my paper because it's, it's still, you know, can rip if we're not careful while it's wet, while the glue is in there. So get a little bit of glue right there. All right, so let me go ahead and hit this with the heat gun for a minute and watch chat for just a second. But ideally, like I said, you want to put some books on top and leave it overnight, which is what I'll probably do anyway after the show, you know, to give it some more pressure because I really want this to last, right? And you could varnish this. I might. It'll be extra protection. Magazines, Beth. I cut down magazines. It's recorded, guys. I'm not going to go over it again. It's recorded, so there are two magazines cut in half, and so there's four pieces glued together. So got a little bit of glue oozing out. Just make sure it's okay. Let's dry some more on the on the spine. Yeah, I think one's blogging Somerset blogging magazine and one's a Somerset art journaling magazine. They're cut in half, all glued together with their by their covers. And now just covered with some Tim Holtz pen. Needs a little bit more drying here. And I can I can paint and ink the edges, or you could just be neater than me. Now I will say this, guys. Um, a lot of people think that you can decorate with washi tape, which you can. However, if you do use washi tape to like trim your edges off you know to make it pretty like let me just see here um let's just say all right i like this brown because it's kind of matches if you want to do your edges and i'll just do one because i want to give the example uh use washi tape you have to glue this down yeah, it's going to take a while to try for sure. Don't just don't just take your washi tape and just like put it on there and think it's going to stay. It it won't. Trust me. Washi tape is not going to hold up long term. So what you can do is take your glue and I'm just going to run it along the edge here. And you can do this all edges, right? All your edges. Or you could do a different washies, you know, a couple, few different kinds. All right, so I'm going to come around the spine here. And let's just give it some little extra for now. And I'm going to hang it over the edge. Do I want to fold it over? Which would be the best? You could do either way. You could fold it over the edge. But if you fold it over the edge, you have to put glue over here too. Okay. Because when you fold it over, especially if you fold it, you're going to need extra glue. Because it doesn't like to be folded either. But I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and just do one flat band. Just to kind of show you what it looks like here. So I'm going to put, I'll go, I'm going to turn it upside down so I can go straight all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to put the washi tape that has glue on it now. It's all glued down. All right, and I've already put glue right here on the spine, but let me put a little bit more. And then we're going to go around the spine. Turn the book over. Let that sit there for a minute while I put glue on this side. And then...
and then you could even go a little bit on the inside cover if you want just to secure it so let's go on the inside here see this is why I say I got a little bit of glue there so that's why I just stick my hand in and just snap it open if you get glue on your your pages and just kind of fold it over there take off any excess glue flip it over and put it right there or if you don't want it just cut it off okay all right so you can do this all the way around the top and the bottom and the sides okay now I'm not going to do all that right now but I will later so I got that right there all righty so and again I may or may not put a coat of varnish on this if you do that, you know, you have to varnish one side, let it dry overnight, do the other side, or stand it up with the varnish, you know, so it dries. But I think you can see here, you know, you can just kind of, you got to work, work it, work it. You know, put some books on it, really, you know, make it a sturdy thing so it lasts. Because if you're going to go to all this trouble and you're going to paint and doodle and write and journal and idea prompts and all that in here, you want it to hold up. My magazine journals hold up, even though the one had the spine that warped because I didn't go front to back when I was using it. That No pages are really, I mean, maybe a couple are falling out where I've had to tape them in, but, you know, I don't really care even about that. Um, here's where we did, uh, this was some imagery that was on there, and I wanted to just do a dip uh, a brush a dip um, steel nib a steel nib and just do scratchy lettering in here so this was current events so again this is a magazine page where I put paint so let me find a couple more here's where we did we did this one on show we drew a bird in there uh, these birds were already there this was on the magazine page this is all like washed out with, you know, white paint, blue paint, probably some um, inks, you know. And we just drew a bird on it. Uh, let's see. You know, drew some flowers there. Um, so you can see this is where you just leave whatever you want. And then you have areas to do whatever on. And you could do what I'm showing you in here. In a big book like this, it's just not as handy, you know, but you got more space. But again, it depends on what size you like to use. Do you like to use these big Mama Jamba magazines? Uh, you know, this is four, P have, or two magazines, so four sections cut down and glued together. But you might like this format. I love the big format. I mean, that's why I use so many um, three ring binders. But I wanted to make something kind of tiny and fun for you. Let's see. So you see? Here I've just had some washi tape, but I always glue washi tape. I never trust. So this is just different artwork and stuff that was on the page. I painted it out, scraped some paint, used the palette knife, you know, scrape things around. And that's what we're going to do in this as well. This is just bigger, you know. So, again, hey, Julie Topaz. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, Julie Topaz does tons of magazine and junk journals. I'm sure she's not wanting to... But this one now, Julie, is for, for a specific purpose. If you just joined us, this one is called... I named it at 1 o'clock in the morning. Mini Magazine Mind Mapping Idea Collecting Prompt Playground. <laughs> That's what this one's going to be. But it's all the, you know, it's all, so you know, drew my hand one day. This is, and here we use stencils. Um, so it's, it's like anything you can do. <clears throat> Paint scraping. And we're going to do a little all this. And then what you do is, like I said, then we're going to take our list, our questions, and all this gets written in our prompt jar. And all that stuff gets written 
in this book so when you need an idea you can flip right to something right again I'm, I'm kind of being a little careful with this because it's not dry yet <laughs> you know I really want it to set up well oh yeah I know CB right yeah so again and what a, a, a few things that this does to help you with color combinations it helps you with blending techniques uh, the colors are there it helps you to see colors like if you tried to match the colors in the page with your craft paints even if you don't have that color try to make it try to make that color like let's say it's an olive green and you don't have an olive green can you make it with some gray and some green can you make your own olive green to match the color that's in your magazine see those kind of practice things those kind of things are just invaluable not just for the project at hand but for <coughs> all your project all your art projects your mixed media your art journal your color booking all of it it all ties together So I'm just flipping through here, finding some of the, well, some good samples here. This one's even got some napkin on it. <clears throat> There's already a quote on here. We just left that. Famous pears. <laughs> So anyway, this is where we're going, and, and you can do it to a, any extent you want. You can do it to a full-on done page, or you can just have some areas that are uh, painted out for you to do your notes on, your ideas on. all painted out so you can ma ma match the image match the image with your paint contrast it I added my own little bits here you know again added some water here kind of like you know we do in the uh, art journals and altered books Here's some lighter color ones that don't all have to be dark. Here's a lighter pink one. Um, okay, so I think you get the idea. So I have like four of those going. Here's the other one, one of the other ones I have going. You can see how much it got done in this one. I had a washi tape on some. There are pages in magazine I don't like. Oh. I never glue pages together. I paint over things I don't like. I found now again guys the thing about gluing magazine pages together, especially if it's something like a fashion magazine where it's thin, when you glue those thin pages together, they're gonna wrinkle. Okay. I have found even on the thinnest pages that with paint collage and you know mixed media on top of even a thin page they don't wrinkle now you might see some wrinkling on the back until you get to the back page but if you have paint 
and paint, your pages are quite sturdy. Okay? I don't glue any pages together. I never have. Even when I did, you know, composition note, the uh, composition glue books and all that, I never glue pages together. Yeah, you if you don't like a page, tear it out. I just I feel like it's a page. You might as well just paint over it. Right? You might as well just paint over it and have something. Glue something to that page and paint over it. Here, I've been watching your YouTube videos for months now. Oh, thanks, Coloring Rebecca. Yeah, today we're not really doing coloring book pages, but idea collecting, which we've done a few. <laughs> we've done one or two, uh, but I'm taking them out of my big notebooks and putting them in the smaller ones. Okay, so you get the kind of the idea here where we're going. Say, look at this one. I love this one. So, let's go back to our little book here that we made. If you're just joining us, I've recorded all this, guys, and this is probably going to be two parts because we're probably not going to get that far. Again, I'm trying to be real gentle with this right now because it's still, it's damp. The glue's still wet. The spine's not set up, you know. So I'm going to do a few pages in this, but you'll get the idea. And again, if I need to write a lot of stuff down, I'll just use my um, notebook paper to show you what's going in it. YouTube, and it didn't make sense. You treat it like an alternate. Oh, YouTube, and it... I'm not sure what video you're mean, Bright. But before I do this, I'm going to set it set for another minute. Again, I just put, I glued my washi tape down. Okay, I don't trust washi tape to hold up. And again, I'll probably, you know, do the same thing down here. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I just wanted to show you that that's an option, you know. Let me go get some coffee, guys. My throat's starting to uh, dry, and uh, <clears throat> I don't want to get a sore throat. So one minute. So I'm going to kind of cover some of the lists and ideas and mind mapping and the questions that, um, oh, okay, I just didn't know what video, I thought we're going to, you, you might, we're going to mention it, I didn't know. Okay, bright. All right, so now I've got glue, and again, the nice thing about Eileen's Tacky is it'll roll off when it's wet. I did my nails this morning, but, okay. <laughs> So this uh, po polish is called When Pigs Fly. <laughs> it makes sense? Okay, good. I'm glad it makes sense. All right. So the only you know issue I'm going to have is not wanting to, I want this to really set well. If I start opening and closing it un uncarefully <laughs> or roughly, then I'm, I'm going to, you know, it's going to start to come apart until it, it's really glued down well. All right, so let me take a sip of coffee here. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you, I bought this um, I bought this journal at Hobby Lobby. I'd never seen it before. I did tweet a picture of it. It's by Strathmore, and it's called Vision Mixed Media. Uh, Zandra showed some new Strathmore. Now, I have the... I had the tone tan and the tone gray papers, but apparently they've come out, and Xander tweeted a picture of them, uh, tone tan mixed media papers. So I'm guessing they're uh, thicker, 
they're uh, thicker than their regular tone tan and tone gray papers but they they did not have that yet at my Hobby Lobby but they had this one and it's called Strathmore Vision Mixed Media. It's just white paper. It's regularly $15.99, but uh, Hobby Lobby always has uh, sketchbooks on sale for 40% off, which they did. Or you can use a coupon to get it 40 and sometimes 50% off. So I got it 40% off. And this is the Black Coast Perforated Paper. And the cover here is um, like, it's, it's got a double cover. So this is kind of a papery type cover. And then they have this like cards, um, heavier, you know, it's really, it's probably, I don't know, uh, Janet, what's after 110? <laughs> Wait, cardstock. It's heavy, heavy. It's almost chipboard-like. It's almost chipboard-like, and it's gray, and it just has a little M, mixed media. Ni oh, 98 pound. Okay. It says 98 pound. Oh, is that this? Oh, that's the paper. <laughs> The paper's 98 pounds. I was going to say, this is heavier than 98 pounds. This is the cover. Um, the paper is 98 pounds, 70 sheets, 9 by 12. And it it does remind me kind of the, like the Canson Mixed Media paper. It's got some tooth to it. So anyway, um, I'm anxious to use this. And again, they're perforated pages, spiral bound. I always like black spirals. This one's silver, but, you know, whatever. Can't have everything. And, but this is what it looks like when you go to buy it. 140 pound cardstock weight. Yeah, that's the, what that is then, probably. Because it's thick. It's not quite chipboard, see how it bends? But it's really heavy cover. And then the paper is 98 pound. And it says, customize your cover. Steel blue. Well, that's a blue gray. Mixed media cover to make your own. And then you can hashtag Strathmore Covers. So I guess there's people out there doing stuff with their cover. I need to do, do a collage on here and post it, right? Under hashtag Strathmore Covers. So that's that book that I just picked up at Hobby Lobby for 40% off. Okay, I'm still kind of, you know, working my book here. <laughs> oh, Janet went to coffee. Okay. All right, so... Um, let me cover a few of the list things that I'm going to put in it, and then we'll start playing in the book itself. Um, so I, not only do we have our list, and I read some, I've read my list over and over and over, but some people are just coming in, but I'm going to kind of recover them. If you know all my lists, and just fast forward, if you're watching the recording. Okay, so in my freestyle really big notebook, y'all know we made a list of a hundred and... Well, I have 179 things that we we had numbered them out and we did we combined two of them and that's where we would um, make like here we this one was a fish cage and Poseidon so have some of the Poseidon sketches and it's it's in there we go maybe that lamp could go off now let's see maybe because the sun's right out the window there and so um, these are some sketches that we've done, uh, combining things. Um, here we did, I think this one was a goat and a puffin. So we did some little puffin sketches and we did some hey, sitting on a goat's horn there. And, um, so anyway, we would combine two things. Uh, this one was a griffin and a man manatee. So we sketched out a griffin, sketched out a manatee, and then said, well, do we want to put a griffin tattoo on the manatee tail? So it's idea generating, right? And again, guys, if you do this kind of thing, um, now this is my sketches of it. This one's just going to be the, the word collecting, okay? And, um, and sketch ideas out. You'll never, ever run out of... Um, You'll never run out of ideas for things. Some fruit. Okay, this one we did had a warthog. I don't remember the combination here. 
Um, this one we did. So here's some of the combinations that we did. We did um, cherries and a leprechaun. So we had a little green, I was thinking a green leprechaun, red cherries, and then they would be on like on his toes. <laughs> That's more like an elf than a leprechaun. But anyway, here is a lighthouse on top of um, a hedgehog. Here's some um, octopus and jellyfish. Again, guys, white paper, you know. Um, some mermaid tails and some fish tails. So these are all just different um, combinations based off of our, based off of the list. So we have this list and then I have another list here. Well, I forget which one this one. I think this is a continuation. So we have all these different lists of words. Okay, so the idea is to combine them in unique ways. Now let me get my big notebook back out here again. This is my big Mama Jamba one. This is my three ring binder lists book. An idea notebook. So let me go over to my list and I'm going to tell you some of the lists. Um, here I have a whole section in mind mapping, um, word combinations. Okay, so if y'all want to take some notes, <laughs> feel free because these are some of the things that I'm going to put in this book to combine. But I'm trying to find maybe my main list sheets. Let's see. Here's my lettering. Okay. Is this the one I'm looking for? I'm trying to see which one I was looking for. All right. <clears throat> All right, so we we did a whole bunch of things that everybody thought they wanted to see me draw. That was the list in the red book, okay? Things like, you know, certain kind of animals, a sloth, a horse, a, you know. So you want to have lists of things like that, of things. If you break your your some of your ideas out, let me see me, and I know I, I'm trying not to repeat myself too much, guys, but I know it does happen with listing here. <laughs> Okay, so people, place, and things. Okay. People can be anything living. I put anything under the category of people. Now, you can break this out as well. But I put anything people is anything living. That can be animals, mammals, fish, birds, anything living. Place. That can be uh, any, it can be anything from a city to a building, anything like that. And things is obviously anything. You can also do occupations. You can do discoveries. Inventions. I, I hope I'm not uh, losing you guys. Then you can also do words that are contrasting words. Um, like you can do big and small, light and dark. I'm just giving you the simple ones. There's millions of them. Light and dark. So you can do co um, a com contrast and compare words. Okay? You know, like deep and shallow, hot and cold. You get the idea, right? Antonyms. My clean up came across your ideas notebook. And it's still empty. Oh my gosh, Jean. Jean, Jean, Jean. And I even pulled out, Jean, look, I even pulled out your prompt jar. <sighs> okay, so here's some of the things that you can put in here. Um, let me see what else I have. Um, I'm trying to keep it, I, I mean, I'm not trying to keep it simple, but I kind of am trying to keep it 
um, you can do eras. Like, you know, you can do everything from, you know, medieval, you know, the, uh, the sixties, you can, I mean, any kind of era. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you some general list. Um, so under places that can be anything from buildings to countries to things like um, here's here's some of my list of places like cities, countries, continents, the oceans, seas, mountains, valleys, forests, jungle, hills, sky, space, beach, rivers, any kind of businesses, homes and streets, underwater, planets, different dimensions, parks, churches, houses, past, present, future, swamps, caves, ruins, paths, roads, streams, towns. Those are those all fall under places. Now you can break them out. You can divide your places out into, you know, outdoor places, buildings. You can break you can break them out, but I'm just kind of showing you what can come fall under there. Um, you can have all kinds of lists. Let me just read some of the lists that I have. Okay, and I know I'm going fast, but these are the kind of things that you can add to give you I did I did generating mind mapping ideas and asking all the questions when, who, what, where, why, when, how, or what yeah. Ask these questions with everything you put in your book. I, I and it may sound kind of convoluted until you actually do it. Once you actually do it and gather ideas from combining different things, you will see exactly what I mean. It's almost like you got to do it to see it. <laughs> okay, so like, here's some of my lists, okay? These are just some of the lists. I'm, this is not what's under the list. This is just the lists themselves. Like I said, people, places, and things occupations, discoveries, seasons, and weather, transportation. If you wrote down every form and mode of transportation and combined it with our gardener and our schoolhouse, you know, come out of transportation in here. This was our sample earlier, okay? Then you can also break it out by your animals, mammals, fish, insects, reptiles. You can break things out by flowers, trees, medicine, origins, fruits, seeds and herbs, events and holidays, uh, foods, restaurants, travel, countries, architecture, geology, science, religious beliefs, inventions, music, art, money, technology, sports, games, time periods, fabric and fashion eras and the fashion and fat the kinds of fabrics you know wool cotton silk papers wood metal uh, I think I said birds uh, tools utensils any kind of buildings like libraries and museum list every library every museum what do they have in them why who what where when why and how of every library you list Colors and color names, character traits, emotions and moods, books and subjects, stores and shops, um, historic, anything historic, and that can be broke down into time periods or, or whatever. Any kind of symbols, numbers, where, you know, where have they been used? Who, what, where, when, why, how? Did you take a formal school? <laughs> No, I've taken art classes, Bright. I did go back to school uh, for art and journalism, but because of medical reasons, I had to quit. But uh, I've, I've, I've taken art courses all my life. I've moved over 30 times in my life. So anytime I want to learn something, I get a book. Uh, <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's just, that's just the t list topic header. That doesn't include what's in it right um and we've gone through we did a whole thing one day uh on our show of all the inventions we could think of discoveries i have a whole list here of occupations a whole page of occupations um 
concepts, travel, um, You can do all kinds of action words, all kinds of uh, verbs. You can do, uh, there's just so much, guys. And, but, but before you hit the Google button, try to make as many of these lists as you can without Googling them. Try to make your own first. Think, how try to see how many you personally can think of. Think of it like a crossword puzzle. You know, don't go just look up the answer. Try to write down as many things as you can um, without looking them up. I mean, just in the just in the paper column here. I have a fabric, a paper, and a wood. Think of every kind of wood. I mean, you know, oak, birch, every kind of wood. You know that you could think of. Paper. I thought we we did this one time. I think on our show here. Like um, every kind of paper we could think of: vellum, wax paper, parchment, cardboard, tissue paper, napkins, paper towels, brown bags, packaging, magazines, calendars, old books, music paper, dictionary, encyclopedias, maps, children books, ledgers, photos, newspaper, wrapping paper, greeting cards, scrapbook paper, ephemera, clip art, school papers. Painted scraps, postage stamps, old envelopes, stickers, graph paper, charts, color book bits. <laughs> so that's just a, a list under paper. Same thing you can do with fabric. Like I said a little while ago, you know, silk, linen, twill, tweed, all the different papers. Um, so anyway, all these things, all these words. Let's see, I want to get over here to this one. I think I'm going to use some of these. All these can be taken, take one or two. Take one or two words, like we did a minute ago. So let's just say transportation, like let's just say you said the city bus. It could be anything, okay? So mind map that out. What do you think of when you think of the city bus? And it's going to mean something different to everybody. Whatever is going to come to your mind. It's going to be what comes to your mind at that moment, right? And ask these questions with every word. Hey, Vicki. So, like, let's just take the city bus. When? When? And I'm just going to ask these kind of slowly so you can think of them. I'm not even going to write them down. I'm, well, I'll write the questions down, but you think, you think of it yourself in your head. So you think of a city bus. When? What? Where? Who? Why? How? And use your imagination with just that one word. Now, if you combine the city bus with, let's say, what if that city bus was in the Renaissance? Spell. Spell check. What if there was a city bus in the Renaissance? What if, um, what if uh, Leonardo da Vinci got on a city bus? Where, what would he do? Where would he go? Who would he see? Why was he going there? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Smell it. <laughs> but combine two unrelated things and then ask all these questions guys but it i got to say it does take time it takes time to list things to make lists it takes time to write them down it takes time to mind map it takes time to make a book to put them in so yeah all right then we have our prompt job i'm kind of we're going to get to the book here in a minute <laughs> We might start another part. I might start another part when we start painting. All right, so then we also have, now these are the ones that I've, we've used before, so I put them in a separate bag so we don't reuse them all the time. But these are some uh, prompts that we came up with, the, a, a whole bunch of people came up with on one, I think it was Jean's stream, and I printed them all out, cut them down, put them in a jar, um, like use graphite. 
use a repetitive pattern. Glue down confetti. Well, that one's not for Barb, but <laughs> these are kind of like art journaling, you know, techniques, if you will. These are kind of like techniques to use. Uh, machine stitch on paper. Um, use something found in nature. Pleat a piece of paper. Make a pop up. Um, color. What's this? This color. Make a spinner and pick to pick cool colors. Uh, use black gesso. So anyway, you get the idea. So these are the kind of like techniques to use. Now, there are thousands, and I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say thousands, of idea lists. lists. I've, got, I've got quite a few books. Let me pull a couple books off my shelf. Without knocking everything over. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Okay, here's one. Um, and these are just three that, uh, you know, had on, uh, just on hand. For instance, 642 places to draw. There are books like this that are 642 or whatever things to draw. There are 642 things to write. There's writing prompts. There are art prompts. There are all kind of prompts like this. It's just best if you try to think them up. Do I still have that list? Which list, Beth? I don't know what list you mean I have them all everything I just said they're written down there it's not I, I didn't print them out for anybody I just tell people to write them down while I'm talking and pause the video <laughs> so there's these kind of books I've not used them um, in the book I've used some of the ideas we've done a few um, where we've done them in a sketchbook because to me this isn't enough well it's okay uh, to sketch this book is really not going to be a sketchbook, okay? If you want to sketch out the ideas, you, you could probably do it a little tiny bit. There's not a lot of room. This, this book is more about, rather than sketching your ideas, just writing the ideas out. And then taking these ideas and putting them in an art journal or a uh, sketchbook, like my red book I just showed you a little. Um, yeah, the, oh, the prompts. Yeah, Jean just was on there on um, there's somewhere on Nitty Treasure Blogspot, K I I mean K N I T T Y Treasures Nitty Treasures, um, Fluffette, <laughs> Fluffy, Fluffy's blog, um, Bren, uh, she has a list of these, but I don't know where on the blog, and don't ask me to find the link, guys. I I don't know. You know, but trust me, there's thousands, thousands of lists out there of prompts. I mean, I have, I have Kyla Goodhand's uh, little cards. We've used these before. Now, now we're, now I'm going kind of away from. These are techniques. Okay, these are techniques. Use watercolor. Uh, use an old fo add an old photo. So um, her little journaling cards are more prompt art journaling prompts. Okay, same thing for these are like technique prompts. Okay, okay, so these that I'm trying to show you are idea collecting things and lists, lists to combine. And if you combine them in weird ways, you'll come up with some cool things. Okay, so anyway, back to the 642 places to draw, like um, a Spanish bull ring, a vampire's bedroom cruise ship boiler room, Woodstock in 1969, um, a dojo, um, a Christmas tree farm. So there's all kinds of things to draw in books like this. And you can find these kind of things online. If you look up, just but try to do as many as you can yourself first, guys. Try Because that will make you think, and you will also um, have... Your creativity will be sparked by your own imagination. 
so anyway there's these kind of books there's these kind this one's called one page at a time and I've got I don't know how many different ones like this and I usually get them when they're on clearance I think I got this one for a couple of dollars or something but anyway um, there are all kinds of little checklists and things to think about yourself feelings I have felt it may be ever you could write these down sad mad glad nice not nice, jealous, proud, grumpy, joyful, stressed, tired, bored, apathetic, pathetic, happy, frantic, slow, very slow, love, sure. And, you know, there's some, you know, adjectives for you to, can, to put with your list of animals and fish. And when you combine them, guys, you will see so many new possibilities. Um, this one's called Start Now, Creativity Journal. There's so many of these out there. And again, it's got all kinds of things. Feel it, see it, do it. Places to write um, and fill out and journal. Questions, you know, to answer. And these kind of things also spark ideas. Nothing saying you can't put that in here. All right, let me put this back up here. it's holding up some of these. Um, I'm trying to see what else kind of things like that. Okay, so um, yeah. Y'all know you've seen, you know, all of us in the art community and journaling communities, you've seen tons of lists. I'm still kind of f flattening this out and f uh, playing with it a little bit because I just glued it. All right, but if you ask, if you ask the, the main questions, who, what, when, where, why, what, and how, if you ask these with all your mind mapping and your listing, that generates a whole nother mood or vein, I should say, another vein of thinking. Okay, kind of like, you know, when we do our chat packs, you know. All right, so back to, okay, I think what I'm going to do, we're at two hours, so I'm just going to call this the mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground set up. So we set it up. Now I'm going to make it, the next part is we're going to use it. Why are all your, all blank? This book, this is, I just made this this morning, Vicki. Are you talking about this? Oh, yes. Oh, the books that I just showed. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell. Yes, I use the, I write in other books. <laughs> yes, Mickey, I do. I take those, like we've done the 642. We've taken those and we drew a Japanese garden one day. We drew, uh, what else did we draw? But we've drawn, yeah, I put them in other books. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mickey. Yeah, the work, yeah. Yeah, they're in other journals. Okay, so we'll call this the setup couple hours plus I showed some you know rabbit trails at the very beginning of the show uh, my uh, magicals that I uh, put in the sprayers uh, and a few other things oh and in case you're just here and you missed it yes I know don't email me I'm going to show it again uh, even though boo and I don't know is Pat did Pat ever come in because Pat Crochet her granddaughter um I don't see it. Her granddaughter was at Summit as well. So I'm going to show you real quick a little video of Boo practicing. They did not win. They're on the way back from Florida now. But I will show you the little video that Mom sent me. I mean, uh, Denise sent me and my mom. Let's find it here. Okay, so... I'll try to zoom in a little because I know it wants to flash out on camera. So Boo starts out in the middle and then comes over here and then back in the middle again. So, yeah, this.
so that's uh, some of their practice they did before the competition. And, uh, yeah, got to show her off. And, um, yeah, I showed Cam and his uh, prom date. I don't know if I should show that. These, these girls that you just saw performing, you can't tell who's who. But I don't have permission from Cam's date to put it on YouTube. <laughs> I saw I showed you girls. Uh, before I hit record, but I'm not going to put that on YouTube, but he looked, he and his date looked awesome, but, uh, yeah, so, I know, so I'm going to stop the video, and, um, yeah, thanks everybody for watching our mini magazine mind mapping idea collecting prompt playground set up, and now we'll, then we're going to come back and we're going to do some painting in it. So, um, all right, so hang on, guys, and we'll be right back. <laughs> okay, so now on to the idea, and I partially have started it. Y'all know about magazine journals that we've done before, okay? And if y'all have any questions, put them, on, put them in caps. If you're watching this recording on YouTube, bless your heart. <laughs> if you're watching this on uh, YouTube... It's a live show on Ustream.tv, and um, yet yeah, I upload these videos unedited, unrehearsed, <laughs> on everything, and I just put them up on uh, YouTube, and I've been doing that for about three years. I've been streaming for seven, and uh, almost seven, and um, uploading for about about three <laughs> about three years, and that was because a few of my friends, Gene, Rach, Zero, One, One, Three, or O, One, One, Three, Gene, and a few others, <coughs> said, you need to put these up on YouTube, I went, no, I don't want to edit, and I don't want to do all that, too much time, so what I ended up doing is just uploading straight to YouTube, just as they are, they're unedited, they're not speeded up, they're just nothing, they're just like, they're the, this is what we do on Monday, Wednesdays, and the occasional Friday, so, <laughs> and I'm glad I did. I have to say, I'm glad I did. I met lots of cool people and fun things over on YouTube. So, yeah. All right, so back to the magazine journals. I've shown these before. They are two magazines glued together, and I, I won't go into the spine here and all this. Well, I might have to if we do the next, anyway. Um, if you work in a magazine journal, especially if you've glued a couple together or any kind of magazine or any kind of journal where the spine might warp like this, you have to work front to back, back to front, some in the middle, some in the front, some in the back, back and forth. If you don't, if you just try to go straight from the front to the back, this is what can happen to the spine. And there's no getting that back. There's no flattening that spine back out. So in this one, I did go front to back, middle, back and forth, back and forth. And it's still a little warpy, but not near as bad as the other one. These are two magazines glued together. And then I, I call it reverse collage, where you'll take your pages and white out, white out could be any color, okay? You paint out any text or any pictures or anything you don't want, okay? You can ink the edges. You can distress it. These are all distressed inked edges. Um, let's see. So you can see here. Now a couple benefits of doing this. One is you can you'll learn how to blend. You will learn how to you'll you can use the, use the colors that are there. So for instance, this page had a lot of red, yellow, and cream. So those are the craft paints, and I use all the same craft, I use the same paints in all my projects, whether it's my art card, my art journal, my collage, um, art journals, my um, uh, altered books. Oh, I just use Americana craft paint. It's matte. The reason, and, and it doesn't say matte on it. I did have somebody ask that on YouTube uh, over the weekend. Um, it doesn't say matte on it. But it does not say metallic, satin, or gloss. Those will say on there. You know, it'll say metallic, satin, or gloss. You don't want those if you want to use color pencil on top of it. This is matte. So because it's matte, let me just grab a pencil here. 
pencil is so, um, in the, you know, I, I got them off uh, Amazon from Lindy Stamp Gang. And what they are, they're a powder. <clears throat> and when you get them wet and dissolve them completely, they're like permanent, like an ink. Okay, they're permanent. So I wanted to put some in some spray bottles and then leave more concentrated powders to use, like in a palette or something. Or sprinkle. You can sprinkle them on a wet paper and they just do magical things. Um, <clears throat> so I needed these all cleaned out so that I could use them. So what I did on, um, on, on over the weekend, I don't even remember what Dad did this now. Was it yesterday afternoon? Yeah, it was yesterday afternoon. Hubster was taking a nap. <laughs> um, no, I did not get under the boardwalk, Janet. That that set, no. Um, so anyway, I took out a big roll of paper. I have you know huge rolls of paper, and I rolled it out in the in the grass, <clears throat> and it was so windy too. So I was kind of worried about setting up my camera and my lappy and everything up on TV trays outside. But I took it all outside, set it up. You know, set up my camera on um, on uh, Trippy the Tripod here. So I had my camera here and set up Trippy the Tripod. I took my lappy, took it all outside, rolled out the paper, and I was going to just sprinkle out all that leftover paints out of these jars, clean them out, and reuse them for my magicals. So I set it all up. Um, I had an umbrella. I put an umbrella over Lappy so I could see the screen, and I hit record. Everything was going, so I run out there to the grass and start flinging paint. Got the, had the hose out there, squirting down the paint, and watering it down, and it was all windy. So I was having to run over to my little center garden for bricks, ran over there for bricks, put the bricks out, was rolling it out, and anyway. So it then and it only took about I only did it for maybe less than 10 minutes probably closer to six seven minutes something like that because it didn't take long just to you know get the get the paper wet shake out all the excess paint uh, and all that so then i take i turn it all down save the video take it all in take the camera back in take the lappy in take the tv trays back in roll you know set the paper out to dry take everything back upstairs and then I look at the video, and because I, I went on battery on Lappy instead of hard, you know, plugging into the wall, which was right there. I have an outdoor plug. I could have just plugged it in right there. I, I went off a of battery, so it turned out jerky. It was like, you know, you know how it is when the film is jerky like that. So all that work. I mean, it took me at least an hour for a five-minute <laughs> Um, I did it on the grass Prisma because I didn't want to do that on the driveway because I didn't know how permanent any of those paints were going to be on the driveway. So I did it on the grass. Um, so anyway, it turned out all jerky and my hair is blowing and the papers are blowing, but it was, it was all like in stop motion. You know what I'm saying? What, like, it looks like I, I did this and then that and then this and then the paper goes like that and then the paper goes like that. It was all like all in stop motion. No, I'm not putting that on YouTube, Terry. <laughs> anyway, so that being said, I cleaned out all these jars, including a couple um, that I just had washed, you know, leftover dilutions in. And so I put labels on them, put the names on them, yeah, I might have, and write the word down. And I can remember. But when I have things like a whole bunch of stuff that I want to remember, then I don't want to <clears throat> wake Hubster up and my phone my phone light is pretty bright. I'll just have to, you know, run to the bathroom, write it all down. <laughs> I did that about three times last night. He may be here. I don't know. Sometimes he pops in in the morning. Um, yeah. So anyway, just saying if you do. Okay. Um, two, three things first before we get started on the project. I said started and Siri popped up. Uh, first off, I wanted to show you, now I talked last week about my granddaughter being at Summit for the cheer competition. Their team did not win, but I do have, um, just going to Summit is really a big deal, guys. If y'all, if you have kids or grandkids in, in competition cheer, you know what a big deal going to Summit is. However, I at least have a little video of their practice. Let's see. 
and uh, you can't see who anybody is so I'm gonna I'll go ahead and let's see let me back this up here if I can there we go all right so I'll try to zoom in so y'all can kind of see <clears throat> this is some of their practice down see there at the ESP where's the little sign there there's a sign somewhere that shows that uh, hang on they're at the ESPN Center practicing out in the yard. Okay, so I'm going to show you this real quick. Boo's in the middle. And then she goes over this way. So yeah, <laughs> real proud, real proud of her. Hey, Ronja. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you because I talked about it all last week. So, you know. Um, and then I got a couple pictures of, from the, not the actual competition. That'll probably be on YouTube. One of, one of, they have a, a photographer that films things not sure about summit I'm not sure but anyway um, I did get a couple pictures of her uh, here's one I'll just show you this one so yeah so yeah there she is cheer <coughs> at uh, summit so Anyway, another sip of coffee, guys. Starting to talk makes my voice start. Got to drink something. Oh. Hey, Mel. Okay, so <clears throat> I did finish. I did tell the girls I tried to. I wanted to do a, uh, I wanted to use up the paints that were in these little bottles because I wanted to use the paints up so I could use the jars for my magicals, right? So I have five, ten, sixteen magical colors that I got. Uh. Okay, welcome everybody to, here we go, coffee and art <laughs> in Monday morning. Hope everybody had a good weekend. So a few things to show and share, and I told the girls pre-chat that I had some ideas that popped into my head at midnight. So, um, yeah, for, for about 12 to 1, I was up writing notes and uh, getting ideas. Then this morning, I woke up and cut down some magazines for a project that I have want to do today. We'll see how this goes. That's as far as I got as far as, is this going to work? <laughs> It's, it's working in my head. <laughs> Thanks, Scoobs. Uh, the idea worked in my head. Um, I don't know if y'all never, if you have trouble falling asleep. Now, when the, I, a new idea is rolling like this, I have to write it down. Because then, I'll, of course, you know, you'll forget it. And I'm always big about writing ideas down. And this is going to be part of idea collecting, this project today, along with the magazine journal. Um, so you have to write your ideas down. Big, big on writing your ideas down because you will never remember every idea that pops into your head. And trust me, you get a lot more ideas than you think. But you forget them so quickly because they're replaced with the next idea. Whereas if you wrote them down or collected your ideas, then you would have them. <coughs> but if you ever have trouble falling asleep, um, do something like, um, I'll paint in my head. Or um, and you could do a color book page. Usually a painting will overrule a color book page in my head. But if you, if you lay down and, you're, and you've got all kinds of things on your mind and you can't sleep, then mentally go take out a canvas, gather your supplies, set them out on your art table, mix your paints, get out your brushes, see yourself sketching out the idea, and take your time. And just mentally go through the steps. It's kind of like counting sheep, but you're counting art steps in your project. 
and then you can see yourself, you know, if you're coloring, for instance, then see your page in front of you and, and get your colors out, start coloring, what color combinations, and that kind of thing. And it relaxes you because it takes your mind off of a thousand things and just kind of focuses it down to one, you know, one little project. And so it relaxes you. Like I said, it's kind of like counting sheep. Uh, but now, when you start getting hundreds of ideas rolling in your head at once, oh, I got to do this tomorrow. Oh, I want to do that. I want to do this on stream. I want to do, you know, then you're then you're getting too many ideas. <clears throat> yeah, and I and I watch Jean too <laughs> if I can't sleep. But I don't want to do that in the middle of the night. If I wake up in the middle of the night or something, because I don't want to wake Hubster up. He gets up at you know 4:30 as it is. <clears throat> Sorry guys, let me get a sip of coffee. So, um, you know, I can just close my eyes and, and picture a, uh, yeah, instead of counting sheep, you, you, you color a page in your head. And you can imagine whatever colors, tell yourself stories that aren't good enough to write. Oh, you know, but the thing is, Aaron, they may be good enough to write down. you got to write them down. <clears throat> I was saying before um, I hit record that I can I can take a post-it note in my Sharpie, which I don't know what I did with it. I'm going to need here and just write down, you know, an item. So like um, here's all I won't read all the colors. I've done that before, but this is how vibrant they are and concentrated. Here's the white one. Um, and so they're very vibrant and concentrated. There's the black. <clears throat> so these are all the colors. I made labels for them all. Some are kind of similar, like those two are really similar. And two of the, the lime greens, these two are real similar. They're a little bit different, but you know. These are a little different. One's mint doesn't look quite mint on camera and then a yellow so I did and then I put them they're in these little Kleenex boxes and I just you know kind of spaced out I put the yellows and greens the pinks and orange the blues and purples like that and then I just wrote magical inks on the front so that when they're on my shelf I know that these are different from you know my other sprays uh, no oh oh so anyway so get this so I did all that with the paper and it was so windy. I, and it was long. I mean, I'm talking like 10, maybe 20 feet of paper. Like I did 10 feet. In, no, probably like, well, let me try to guess by my body. Probably about 8 feet and 8 feet. I rolled out 8 feet and 8 feet. And then sprayed and sprayed water and did all this. Then I rolled another. Then I took, another, took the roll of paper and went on top of both of those 8 feet to kind of mash it down and to make another imprint. And then did another set on top. And the wind was just blowing. It was so windy. I didn't even think about this guy. I just went out to do it. I wanted to get these jars cleaned out. And to clean these jars out, I didn't want to waste the paint that was in them. So I did all that. Took over an hour. <laughs> and then, um, so I put a brick on it. I put a brick on it while it was going to dry. Right? No, it didn't fly away. I put a brick on it. I went out a couple hours later. They are all glued together. All the papers were glued together because I put a brick on it. But I, I had to do something. I couldn't just let it fly around the neighborhood, go collect it later. <laughs> so all that and the paper went in the trash. So <laughs> don't try to do driveway art in the wind. So anyway, let's move that off of there. <laughs> All right, so, oh, i got to get my magazine journals here. So, y'all know, now we're, now we're on to the project. <laughs> so, this is the idea that came to me last night. It's kind of a combination of a couple other ideas. Well, and the other thing, too, one of my neighbors was having a party. I think it was a graduation party for one of his kids. And we were invited, but, you know, Hubster is just getting over being having a cold, and he was napping, and we weren't going to go anywhere. But his music was loud, which I don't care. But when you're filming, I said, oh, man, I'm going to have to turn my volume down because I can't put this on YouTube with music. 
blaring copyrighted music you can't do that right <laughs> and uh, so I'm thinking okay so I waited you know I, I while I was getting the hose out and rolling out the paper and putting bricks on it I'm thinking okay I'm gonna try to do this in between the sets <laughs> you know you had a bunch of music then it'd be quiet for a couple minutes so as soon as the, the that set of music record run out there you know and so 